So there's one more entry that we need to add into our GDT in order to complete it, and that is the task state segment or TSS entry. This entry is going to be used for context switches. Now context switches exist for a variety of different reasons. Common examples include things like kernel function calls, a time slice of a process expiring, things of this nature. Generally, when we need to switch from one process to another, we're going to typically have a context switch. A context switch is going to involve storing the old state of the currently executing process and then moving in a new state of the process that we want to execute in order to start executing it with its uh, information intact. Now, the task state segment is what enables us to do this kind of context switching. It's a data structure that holds information about a task. Now, previously, it was being used mostly for uh, hardware task switching, but we'll see in a lot of operating systems that we can use the TSS for software multitasking as well. It's a bit more efficient to work in software multitasking with the TSS. So this is primarily where we're going to see this being used. Now, before I get into the actual uh, TSS implementation, I'm just going to fix a few small things inside of the GDT uh, file, as we're going to be working inside of this file anyways, and there were a few small things that I need to fix from the previous video. And that's going to be in terms of these types here. I'm using this ADDR underscore T type, which actually hasn't been defined yet in our project. So I'm going to change these out to UIT32 underscore T. This should be a sufficient size for us to be able to work with. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that I'm casting things in that proper type because I neglected to do that in the previous video. It gave us some warnings. It didn't actually cause any sort of errors, but it's best to just fix out those warnings where we can. Okay, great. So with that fixed, let's go over to gdt.h and let's implement what we need for our task uh, segment. So we're going to create a struct for this and the struct I'm going to call TSS entry struct. And it's going to have a lot of different properties in it that are all going to be associated with the different tasks that exist in our, uh, basically our TSS segment. So we're going to have a uint32 underscore t, which is going to be previous TSS. This is going to be the previous TSS. And generally, this would be used if we have a hardware task switching. And generally, it would form something like a linked list, where we have like a list of different tasks, and we'd be able to you know, pick one of the previous tasks off of the list. We're going to have uint32 for a lot of the different types of registers that we have. For instance, ESP0 would be the stack pointer register. So generally, this would be the stack pointer to load when we change into kernel mode or when we do a context switch. And then similarly, we're going to have other registers like SS0. This would be like the stack segment to load, uh, you know, that sort of idea. And we're just going to keep copying this down because there's a whole lot of UIT32s that we need to do. So I'm just going to copy a bunch of them and I'm just going to change out the name. So we had ESP0, SS0. We're going to have ESP1. ESP1 generally isn't really going to be used. And you'll find that with, uh, with software task switching as well. A lot of these aren't generally going to be used, but we generally implement them anyways because we need the struct to be in place in order for things to be working as expected. So you see that we create these different duplicates of these stack pointers as well as the stack segments. So we have uh, two total, or sorry, three total since we're zero indexed. Now we have a CR3 register that we're going to preserve. This is again, one of the registers at x86 that we're going to store. The EIP, which is our instruction pointer. We have our E flags register, which is of course all the different flags that may be set. Uh, we have the EAX register, the ECX register. We have the EDX register, and we're gonna need more spaces here. After EDX, we have EBX. We have ESP, which is the stack pointer, of course. We have EDP, which is the base pointer. We have ESI, EDI, which are our, um, you know, our registers that we use instead of our execution. These ones for our like, uh, you know, string-based instructions we saw in previous videos as well. And then we have our different uh, segment registers, right? So we have like things like ES, CS, which we saw in the previous video with the GDT. And you can see that I really am just creating a variable for you know all the different states that may exist for a process in x86, and I'm just uh, defining each of them. So we had ESI, EDI, uh, we're going to have ES, uh, we're going to have CS, we're going to have uh, SS, we're going to have uh, DS, we're going to have FS, we're going to have GS, and then we're going to have LDT, and then we're going to have trap and IOMAP base. So those are the last few ones here. So LDT, then we have trap. 
and then we have IO map underscore base. So those are all the different things that we need in order to store the state of a process. Now, like I said before, these are really just each register in x86 essentially, and we're storing those to keep track of, you know, what is currently the state of our task. And if you want to see information about those states and the structures of those, again, this OS Dev Wiki is gonna be a really great resource for you. Let me just go ahead and pull this up quickly, just so that you can see what that looks like, right? So right here, you can see the whole structure of our TSS, right? So you can see the whole way that that's set up. And generally, we're gonna be working inside of, um, you know, this general setup here. So you can see all the different setups that may exist, and you can see a bit of an explanation on uh, using it for software multitasking, which is something that we'll, we'll continue to build on. We'll, of course, implement software multitasking as we continue on through these videos. Uh, that will be one of the core features that we require for an operating system, of course. Now, in order to create our TSS, we're gonna create a function called uh, write TSS. It's gonna take in an int32, which is going to be the number, so like the index, actually you can make that a uint32 so that it matches the previous. uint16 underscore t ss0 and uint32 underscore t esp0. So you'll see that we're gonna pass these two values into our actual function as we write the TSS. So we'll take a look at how that works as we come over to our gdt.c, right over here. So inside of here, we have the init for the GDT and inside of this init GDT, after we write the user data segment, we are going to write in the TSS segment. And we're gonna provide in a few different arguments. The num is of course the index where we're going to write our uh, entry into. And we provide a value for those two registers that we have as arguments, SS0 and ESP0. And the arguments that we give is going to be 0x10, which you may remember as the offset of our GDT table, which we set up which of our segment registers to. And then the last one we just set to zero. So that's the way that we set those values. Now, a quick little thing here that we should really take a look at. So we have each of these different entries going in. The size of your array you wanna make sure is proper. You can see here I've already adjusted it to six. So I've set this to six here. And this size here is times six. So just make sure that you have that adjusted to be six rather than five, as we now have a new entry on the array here. So once we have this written, we can go ahead and put in our function for write TSS. I'm just gonna copy the definition here, and I'm gonna paste it in here for us to be able to work with. So very first things first, we're going to need to set up a base for our actual, um, for our actual addresses and uh, the entry for the TSS, right? So we're gonna create this in a similar way that we did before. So we had this as a uint32, and I'm gonna call it Bates, and I'm gonna set it equal to the uint32 cast of the address of TSS entry, okay? And I realized that I forgot to declare this struct, so we'll declare it right up here, so where all the other structs are. So I'm gonna create a struct TSS entry struct, I'm gonna call it TSS entry like this. So we create this pointer towards that TSS entry. So we now have the address of it stored. And then like the other uh, entries that we had, we're gonna create a limit, which is going to be the base value plus the size of the TSS entry. So this is declared in a similar fashion to the way that we declared the limit and base of the GDT entries, right? Just a slightly different calculation. We take this base and add it to the size in order to get the actual limit of the TSS entry. And that's the way that we're generally going to be setting this up. So again, it's just giving us the, the limit. So where this is going to be placed in terms of the structure, like the location of it and how large it's generally going to be, right? Once we've done that, we're going to set the GDT gate in order to have our TSS descriptor. So we give it the num, the base, the limit, then we provide two different values here in terms of the, uh, the permission access and the flags, right? So the permission access is E9, and then this is 0x00 as the, um, as the additional flags. Now, of course, I want you to understand what exactly this is looking like when we're putting this in. So if we have E, right, 
this would be the equivalent of 1, 1, 1, 0, right? It's just 1 below f. So that's the idea of e. And then 1, 0, 1, 0, or sorry, 1, 0, 0, 1, right? This would be 9 for our binary. So when we're taking a look at this and breaking down the actual setup, right? Of course, this is enabled and it is in kernel or it's in user mode, right? So it's accessible to user. So that's the 1, 1, 1, right? The zero here is going to be talking about that read and execute. We'll just go back here quickly just to see what that exactly is referring to, right? So we're taking a look at the access bytes for each of these, right? As we're coming through here, the access bytes are going to be giving us this idea of the, uh, the segment or the descriptor byte, right? So the descriptor bit set to zero makes this a system level segment which is what's used specifically for the task state segment. So you can see that that's set to zero for that exact reason, since it's a system rather than just like a general segment. And then we have one, zero, zero, one, right? So that means that generally the execute is set to one. So it's a code segment that can be executed from. That's generally what's being set here, right? And then when we take a look at the other piece that's set here, it's this one at the end. The one at the end is taking a look at access to bits. So we generally are just initializing that to one. So that's what we're looking at for our access bits when we're looking at those equivalencies in the GDT gate. So that way you just have a bit of an understanding of what's being set there. Now, the next thing that we have to do is we have to initialize all of the fields in our TSS to zero. Now, one way that you could do this is you could do every dot property equal to zero. That's gonna take a really long time. So we're actually gonna create a function to do that for us. And we're gonna create it inside of a file called util because it's something that we're going to use actually fairly often and it's, I'm going to guess, something that C implements on its own. I'm not actually sure if it, if it has it, but I'm going to say that it probably has something equivalent to this at the very least. And that is going to be the idea of what we would call a mem set. So a mem set is going to take in a destination. It's going to take in a value, and it's going to take in a count. And what it's going to do is it's going to iterate through the destination and it's going to set the value on each field in the destination. So it's just going to initialize a struct for us. That's generally the idea here. So we're going to include a util.h. And when I set up our mem set, we're going to have a destination, which is going to be set here initially. We're going to have a value and we're going to have a count, right? As I mentioned. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a temp, which is going to be equal to a parse of the destination as a character pointer. And then what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through. So we're going to do just like this general for loop where count does not equal zero, uh, count minus minus like this. And we're going to go ahead and increment temp and set it equal to value. So you see that we're just really initializing everything to that initial value. And then what we're going to return here is we're just going to do a return dest like this. We actually generally don't need this return, right? Since this is really like a void. Um, but, you know, just as a convention, since we have a function pointer, we can have the return generally here. Uh, it would also be possible to just, I think, generally remove this return. And we could even just set this as like a normal void function like this. And generally this is because since we're passing in a pointer to the destination, when we do this, it will actually set the values back to whatever their initial values are. We don't actually have to return anything like this. So this would be the way that we could set up our mem set function. Now, when I come back over to gdt.c, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this. So I'm just gonna do a mem set, right? And I'm gonna set it using the TSS entry. I'm gonna set everything to zero. I'm gonna pass in the size of the TSS entry. Okay. Once that's done, I'm going to initialize the few things that I actually need to initialize. So that'd be SS0, which we pass in as an argument. This sets the kernel stack segment. And as I mentioned before, we could see that that's 0x10, which was the offset that we were setting when we initialized our GDT. And then similarly, we're also going to initialize the stack pointer for our kernel, which is ESP0, which we have initialized to zero in this case. Now, a few other things that we probably want to initialize here is going to be the code segment. Now, the code segment, if you recall, is actually set to 0x08, right? 
But there's a few other things that we actually have to generally adjust with this. So when we take a look at these different values, we're taking a look at specifically, you know, the kernel mode version of the values. In order to keep these in a more general sense so that they're going to work with our user mode kernel mode, then we have to actually or these last two bits with 0x3. Remember 0x3 is the privilege level when we're looking at this sort of context. So it's setting the privilege level to three. This allows the TSS to be used to switch to kernel mode from ring three. So it allows us to switch from user mode to kernel mode. Like I mentioned, one instance of a context switch is if we actually are switching into the kernel mode. So this is the idea of what's happening with the CS entry here. We're gonna do a similar sort of thing with our other segments. So the other segments that we have are the SS, the DS, we have the ES, we have the FS, and we have the GS. All of these are gonna be set equal to 10 or with zero X three. Similar type of idea, right? Except in this case, 10 was the location of, as you see here, the stack segment for the kernel. They were ORing it with 0x3 for the same reason, to allow it to switch from kernel mode to ring 3. So that's the idea of why we're setting each of these values as so. At this point, we are now able to write to the TSS. So that's great. We got our TSS entry in. Last thing we need to do is we need to flush it like we did with the GDT. So we're going to do a TSS flush. And over in gdt.s, we're going to implement that. So the TSS flush is actually a very easy setup. All we actually do is we say that we are going to move into AX, the value 0x2b. Now the value for 0x2b is generally just the offset that is associated with our task segment. So generally the index of the structure would typically be at 0x28 since it's the fifth thing in the GDT table. So if you think each thing is eight bytes, if we're going to the fifth thing, we'd end up at 0x28. But generally what we do is we actually set it to the bottom two bits of that entry. So the bottom two bits would be at 0x2b. So that's why we're using 0x2b here. In order to load it, we simply use the instruction LTRAX. This is going to load the task state register. Once that's done, we return and we've completed our task. Okay, so that should be everything that we need for our TSS. Last few things here is we need to update our make file. You'll see that I've added in here some C flags just to make things uh, easier, more consistent for us. I need to compile together my new utils file. So I'm gonna have utils.c and it's gonna go into util.o. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, of course, load it in as well. Let me just wrap this here. We're gonna have util.o now available here. And that should be everything that we need in our make file to get things up and running. Let's try to build this and see what happens. So we do a make, oh, it looks like I just have an error here inside of my init GDT. It's probably just inside of my header. Yeah, I just forgot a semicolon here, that's fine. Okay. And we have a few more small things that we need to address here. Uh, I probably just have a typo inside of that memset function. Let's just get that fixed up here. Uh, it looks like that's probably the case uh, when I'm taking a look at this here. Uh, oh yeah, it's just that this is in the wrong place. There we go. <laughs> Now we have that up and going. So last thing is that count was undefined here. And yeah, does generally look that, oh, I forgot to type count here. There we go. Okay, there we go. Now everything is corrected and we can go ahead and take a look at our image. Now when I do this, you'll see that I still get the same message, GDT is done. I can add in some more prints to get more granular levels to see each step completing. But generally, if I get to this level and my operating system hasn't completely crashed, I'm going to assume that everything got set up correctly. So at this point, it looks like our TSS is all set to go. Our GDT is all set to go. So we're going to be able to move on to our next few tasks. So in the next video that I release, I'm going to show you some brief debugging tips of how to work with GDB instead of QMU. And then after that, we're going to move into interrupt handling and see how we can take care of those tasks. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.